When we speak of heavy oils and light oils, we are really referring to their viscosity or resistance to shear. Now, the tangential stress of shear is also confused with the normal stress of adhesion, which causes wetting. As we shall soon see, the fact that mercury does not wet the glass stirring rod does not mean that it has no viscosity. Whether a fluid wets a boundary or not, the interaction of the respective molecules is such that there can be no slip either between the fluid and the boundary or between different parts of the fluid. Thus, if one boundary is moved parallel to another, a viscous fluid contained between them will undergo a continuous shear or angular deformation as delineated by the velocity gradient. This is known as couet flow. If we were to measure the force per unit area tau required to move the one boundary or to hold the other stationary, its ratio to the rate of deformation would be a direct indication of the dynamic viscosity mu of the fluid. For reasons of force equilibrium, the intensity of shear must vary across the flow at the same rate that the piezometric head varies along the flow. Since the longitudinal piezometric gradient must be the same at all points, the lateral shear gradient must also be a constant. And since, in a Newtonian fluid, the shear must vary with the velocity gradient, the velocity must be distributed parabolically across the flow section, as use of the hydrogen bubble method in a solution of glycerin and water indeed shows it to do. Angular deformation in uniform Poiseuille flow was expressed as a simple velocity gradient. In non-uniform flow, it is the sum of the velocity gradients in two perpendicular directions. Now rotation was seen in the second film to be the difference of the same two gradients. The linear and parabolic velocity profiles of Couette and Poiseuille flow will be combined if there exists both induced flow due to relative movement of the boundaries and through flow due to pumping or gravity. Evidently, the net result can be either additive or subtractive, depending on the relative magnitudes and directions of the two types of flow, even to the extent of producing backflow in part of the cross-section. If now the originally parallel boundaries are slightly inclined to one another, Conditions of continuity will require the two types of flow to be subtractive where the spacing is wider and additive where it is narrower.